Within easy reach of San Francisco's busy metropolis lie seven natural treasures, as precious as the gold discovered near here in 1848. Their islands and ponds, dunes and wetlands are havens for wildlife and for people. These special places are the National Wildlife Refuges of the San Francisco and Monterey Bay areas. They are part of a national network of more than 548 refuges, totaling nearly 96 million acres. Wildlife conservation has been the promise of the National Wildlife Refuge System since it was founded by President Teddy Roosevelt in 1903. For more than a century, the refuge system has worked with others to manage, restore, and conserve habitat. Special places for wildlife to nest, rest, and raise young. The National Wildlife Refuge System conserves some of America's most special places. Places where birds, fish, plants, and other wildlife can survive and thrive. Refuges are also the people's lands, providing quality outdoor experiences for current and future generations. Three of the local refuges lie in the northern part of San Francisco Bay. Antioch Dunes National Wildlife Refuge runs along the southern shore of the San Joaquin River. It was the first national wildlife refuge set aside to protect endangered plants and insects. The refuge is home to the Antioch Dunes Evening Primrose and Contra Costa Wallflower. It is also home to the endangered Lang's Meadowmark Butterfly, which is dependent on native buckwheat and lives nowhere else in the world. Docents lead tours each month and volunteers help with habitat restoration and monitoring. San Pablo Bay National Wildlife Refuge was established to protect the pickleweed and cordgrass salt marsh and its resident endangered species. The California clapper rail is a full-time resident, as is the salt marsh harvest mouse. Both species live only in the salt marshes of San Francisco Bay, and this refuge provides some of their best habitat. This area is a major stop along the Pacific Flyway. Millions of migrating shorebirds and waterfowl can be seen here from fall through winter. Among them is the largest population of canvasback ducks on the west coast. Miles of walking and bicycling trails provide access to marsh and bay views and to rewarding bird watching opportunities. Volunteer opportunities include helping in the native plant nursery. Although composed of only two tiny specks of rocky land and their surrounding waters, Marin Island's National Wildlife Refuge hosts one of the largest heron and egret rookeries in California. It also provides habitat for other birds, such as the black oyster catcher, osprey, and geese. Volunteering provides a rewarding way to see the refuge. Organized groups help remove invasive vegetation and plant native species throughout the year. Farallon National Wildlife Refuge is the oldest of the refuges in the Bay Area. It is made up of a half a dozen rocky outcrops known as the Farallon Islands, which rise from the Pacific Ocean 28 miles west of San Francisco Bay. Farallon's cliffs are brimming with common murres and other seabirds. Below them, fur seals, elephant seals, and sea lions breed or haul out after an ocean swim. Fur seals are breeding on the islands again, after more than 150 years' absence. From late summer to fall, large numbers of California brown pelicans also make their home here. For seabirds and marine mammals, the Farallon Islands are a sanctuary where they can rear chicks and raise pups. Commercial boat trips provide good views of the island's wildlife. South of the Farallon Islands at Monterey Bay lie two more refuges, Salinas River and Ellicott Slough. Salinas River National Wildlife Refuge is a patchwork quilt of habitats, including grassland, salt marsh, saline pond, sand dunes, and the Salinas River. 
Thanks to its habitat diversity, this small refuge provides living space for a variety of wildlife species, many of them threatened or endangered. Among them are western snowy plovers. During the summer, they nest on the beach and dunes. The Salinas River Refuge is one of the few places left in this part of California where plovers breed successfully. During spring and fall migration, thousands of shorebirds and waterfowl gather on the saline pond in the river. Wildlife viewing and photography can be spectacular along the three miles of walking trails. The beach also offers wildlife viewing as well as surf fishing, a popular activity. Nearby lies Ellicott Slough National Wildlife Refuge and State Ecological Reserve. This refuge was established to protect the Santa Cruz long-toed salamander and its seasonal wetland and upland habitats. Biologists monitor this endangered species throughout the year to help ensure its survival. Here, staff work with local students to restore native habitat. Once again on San Francisco Bay, along its southern end, lies the Don Edward San Francisco Bay National Wildlife Refuge. It was the country's first urban national wildlife refuge. Don Edwards is the largest of our local refuges and it provides an oasis for millions of migratory birds and a variety of endangered species. It serves as headquarters for the seven refuges of the San Francisco Bay National Wildlife Refuge Complex. A variety of activities and education programs are offered here and at the Environmental Education Center in Alviso. In addition to conserving habitat for wildlife, the National Wildlife Refuge System also restores habitat altered by urbanization. Examples of restored habitats can be seen throughout the refuge, but the most extensive is the South Bay Salt Pond Restoration Project. It is one of the largest tidal wetland restoration projects in the West. When completed, a rich mosaic of wetland habitats will replace more than 15,000 acres of former commercial salt ponds. There will be restored tidal marsh and ponds managed for wildlife. The restored marsh will provide habitat for endangered species such as the California clapper rail and salt marsh harvest mouse. The water level in the ponds will be managed to improve the feeding and resting habitat for migratory and resident water birds and for the threatened western snowy plover, all of which thrive in a saltier environment. Conversion of the salt ponds will bring other benefits too. Water quality will be improved and nursery habitat provided for fish. There will be better flood management and more wildlife oriented recreation. Already the public is welcome to enjoy more than 35 miles of walking trails, join guided walks, come for special events, or participate in environmental education activities. You can also volunteer to help lead activities or get involved in countless other ways. There is something for everyone. There is something for you. They are close. They are wild. They are yours. They are the refuges of the San Francisco Bay National Wildlife Refuge Complex. Now let's go outside.